There it is. There it is in all its glory. That's right. Uh, this is Kitsch Flamingo. So I know that many of you might be incredibly shocked that uh, out of all the colors I could add to Distress, why would I add a pink? Um, but pink was actually really needed, and you're going to see uh, the importance of this. So uh, this is called Kitsch Flamingo. Uh, it's really a, it's a colorfully quirky pink, but it's really inspired by the you know the classic yard object that's often considered in poor taste, but it's appreciated in an ironic way because that pink plastic flamingo is a classic classic pink. And believe it or not, in the palette of Distress, we didn't have a color like this. And so I'm going to take you through and show you uh, not only each product and how it looks, and there's going to be some uh, really cool reveals when it comes to the color. Of course, I'm going to always share how it really fits into the Distress line. And then I've got some great makes to show how this color works with others. So I don't want you to be discouraged right away. And I don't want you to be too excited right away for you to think what this color is, because I think by the end of this and you see it, and how it fits, that's really when you can make kind of that final decision of like, oh, I think I need this in my life, or eh, not so much. For me, really not using a lot of pink, this was actually a really important color to add to the line. That's why it um, was actually really high on the list, believe it or not, because pink does a lot of great things with different colors. It does some really great uh, kind of pops with purples. It does really cool things when you mix it with blues. And so, of course, with Anything with the new color, a shout out to Ranger because it's available in all the mediums. We have uh, the ink pad and the oxide ink pad, re-inkers for both, the spray stain, the oxide spray, embossing glaze, paint, and of course, my favorite, uh, the, the enamel pin. And again, all of these are available. I know there's uh, many great retailers that have been out there supporting, uh, doing pre-orders. Thanks to all of you that just continue to order this color without even seeing it. That's, I think that's the part that makes me most nervous is that you don't get to see it. And then you're like, oh, I don't really know. So let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, each of these mediums and the different colors. And we'll go there. I know that Mario is uh, moderating the chat and there's actually several moderators helping us out, which is good. So first I'm just going to get into uh, the ink and the re-inker and just share kind of the basic because distress always starts with the ink pad to me. Now, What's interesting about this, of course, when it comes to how many colors are in the the Distress palette, well, there are 64 colors now, if you want to say. Uh, 60. This would be the 64th color. However, we still have Picket Fence, which is in many of the mediums, so I guess that would be 65. And then there's three metallics that we have in different things like uh, mica sprays and crayons and paint. So I guess technically there could be 68. So it really just depends on how you want to to answer that question. But with all the colors, believe it or not, there's always room for another shade, another tone. And that's what helps me choose what color to do, really. It's about like, can I mix a color to get that color? Or is it really complicated because of the shade or the tone? So if you see here in the world of pinks, right, we have spun sugar here. I'm going to take this. And this is just done on watercolor paper. I actually have it on two different color cardstock. So you can see how the paper changes. But this is just watercolor. I take the ink pad, I swipe it directly onto the watercolor. Um, I spray it with water just so you can see it wick and blend because that's another important feature of Distress is how it wicks, right? That's what makes Distress unique uh, when it comes to water reacting is, is kind of that uh, variation, that gradation of color that you get in the wicking property. But you can see here in the pinks, sponge sugar being very, very faint, worn lipstick being a very dirty pink, and then we jump to pick raspberry. So if you think about that, there was really that void of that perfect pink, that kitsch flamingo pink in the line, because we went from something really light to something really dirty to something uh, really kind of, I don't know, bluish. So it was really challenging to achieve this color of pink, which is why I needed to add that. Now, of course, when you change paper, this is mixed media heavy stock. So this is going to a little bit of an off-white. You can see the paper difference. And a little bit of that off-white paper is obviously going to change that as well. You can see here that it just becomes a little bit more peachy. But Kitsch Flamingo is still a very, very nice pink. You've got worn lipstick in there. And then, of course, picked raspberry. Now, what I wanted to do, though, once I swiped these pinks, and I'm like, okay, well, I wanted to look at worn lipstick. Because this is an interesting one. Because, honestly, this was kind of my go-to pink for so long. And then when Kitsch came along, I'm like, whoa, this looks really 
I don't know, kind of orange or coral to me. So that's what made me wanted to do the next color swatch, which has nothing to do with kitsch at all. But I wanted to actually look at worn lipstick and say, okay, how does that really fit in when I compare it to say Tattered Rose, which is definitely a much dirtier, dirtier pink, Abandoned Coral, which is actually a coral color, and Barn Door, which is what I consider kind of an orange red. Now, when you put it on this swatch, then it looks pink again, right? So it's really interesting, worn lipstick, how uh, that kind of fits into different colors. And I never really noticed how that changes from uh, more of a, a warm pink to kind of, uh, I don't know, a peachy pink, depending on what you put it with. Same, same thing here. When you even put it on mixed media heavy stock, now you really see that it's a lot pinker than before. So an interesting thing I just discovered about worn lipstick and not really having that comparison. All right. So now let's get into the oxides. Of course, with the Distress Oxides, you can see that that oxidation really brings out a much brighter shade of that color, right? So we can see here that Kitsch, when you get it wet and it oxidizes, it actually becomes much softer. And I'll bring back in the dye swatch. And that's also really important to remember that there are different distress mediums for a reason, right? It can't be exact, exact, matchy, matchy because of the formulation, right? Oxides have a fusion of dye and pigment. So pigment's going to be a little bit more opaque, but also when you wet it, you're going to get more white that comes through. And you can see that represented between all of those colors, between the dye and the oxide. But I really love how Kitsch plays in here because again, you're getting kind of a shade of pink that you wouldn't normally get. You can see already with oxide, to me, it kind of has an interesting purpley vibe that happens. So this is gonna be really good mixed with purples for all of you that, that wanted a new purple. Well, throw Kitsch in with your current purples and you'll see some amazing new purple shades happening. You can see because it is a dye and pigment when we're talking about oxide, that the color pretty much maintains its integrity even if we're working on an off-white paper, but you're still getting that beautiful wicking of the inks. And then because while I was in swatch mode, I still needed to see uh, how worn lipstick worked next to those other ones. And again, when you put it next to those warmer colors, it really brings out a different color pink. And that's important to know for those of you that like to blend backgrounds, do stencils, the colors of ink that you pair together are going to bring out different qualities or properties of that ink. So if you own a lot of Distress, if you own uh, all 60 plus colors of Distress, play around with that, right? Because you might have a color and go, oh, this, you know, this blue, whatever, doesn't look really dark. Well, maybe it's because of what you're putting it next to. I think if you blend it with something else, you're going to bring out a whole different property of that color. And this swatch is really proving that. So this is one of the things that I think is really intriguing me uh, this year is mixing different colors with new ones. But that is Kitsch Flamingo. So you can see the real importance of that pink. And then another thing that I did, because even though I have these lined up, I wanted to see really how similar these were or how important they would work together. So I just did this. I just took a, a sheet of watercolor cardstock. It could be the white mixed media if you wanted to do that. And I took a spray and I just sprayed each of the colors. Well, right there, this is also a great swatch. So if you're not into swatching out all your colors like this, or maybe you're into sprays because you do a lot of art journaling or you do uh, any type of mixed media, this is a great kind of swatch to have is just take a piece of paper, spray a few of those different colors on there, write what's on there, you know, just kind of uh, short notes so you remember. And then that's a great way that if you're working on something, you can pick this up and you can choose that that right tone for your project, right? So that was another thing that I wanted to do. Another swatch that I did, and of course, this is uh, when I wanted to really start playing around with the oxide a little bit more, is I wanted to see, of course, how it would work on craft. And you can see the nice intensity of Kitsch really shows up on craft. This is actually after it's been sprayed, but also that oxide, really, really nice, really vibrant. Of course, remember the darker the paper you go, the more white is going to appear, especially on craft. So you'll notice that it's definitely a much paler pink when it's on craft paper. Again, it's all about uh, surface and what color you pair it with. And then <laughs> before I get into the actual uh, color of each one, I just wanted to play around because if you remember the very first Distress Color that we launched last year was Speckled Egg. Take a look at Speckled Egg and Kitsch Flamingo. Now, if, if you love cotton candy, which I do, um, these are like the colors of cotton candy in my imagination, right? Seeing that pink, that color blue, but look at when they come together. Wow, 
That is so cool. Such a great blend. And then I just wanted to play around with just continuing to add more water. And I was starting to get just this beautiful shade of purple that you don't see in shaded lilac or milled lavender or even Victorian velvet. It's kind of its own little blend. So if you have speckled egg and if you're getting uh, kitsch flamingo, try those out together. I think this is going to be really good for uh, not only Valentine's, but a nice springtime vibe. Isn't that a cool blend? <laughs> so good. All right, now we're going to get into each individual medium. I'm going to show you the swatches, and then we will get into the makes. I'll also talk a little bit about the pins because we have a couple more pin sets that we've added to it. So let's get into each medium, and we'll talk about those one at a time. And again, if you have uh, any questions that I don't get to, feel free to shout them out in the chat, and Mario will be able to, to help me out. All right, so we're going to talk about ink pad re-inker, right? I just do these with the ink pad. And so here's what I wanted to share with you. Now, for all of my swatches, I work on Distress Watercolor cardstock, and I worked on Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock, which is kind of that off-white. But of course, you can do whatever papers you like to work with. I always say that you should swatch in the papers that you most commonly use because that's going to give you the best results. This one, smooshing my ink pad on uh, my media mat and just going in, spraying with water and dripping and layering. But you can see here on Kitsch Flamingo how beautiful you can get that really light, intense pink that's not washed out like sponge sugar, but also the ability to build the intensity the more layers you add, but it doesn't become dingy like worn lipstick and it doesn't become uh, that raspberry color like picked raspberry, right? So this is just uh, kind of layering with water. Now, I also wanna share the blend. And this is another thing that's important about anyone that uses Distress, whether you are uh, a beginner to Distress or whether you've been using Distress forever. One of the things to remember when you blend a color, when you blend a color, you will always get the lightest tone of that color. Always, always. And so in, there you, go. you can see that color right there, right? There's the wet version, there's the blended version. You can see you're getting that pale version. Even if you blend and blend and you start to layer, the whole idea behind blending is to give you a very soft and subtle color. And that's important to remember because Many people, they start with a very light color, right? You're going to start with, uh, say, spun sugar, which is really a pale, pale pink. I mean, uh, in comparison, compared to kitsch, it's really, really pale. Well, imagine blending it. It's going to be almost non-existent when you blend. So it's important to remember to kind of choose those vibrant colors to even achieve a softer blend, right? Now, if you wet it, you're, you're able to pull out some of this intensity a little bit more, right? So that's just kind of the wet or dry. But here's the interesting thing about the ink, okay? And I noticed this in the ink. When I put this ink on mixed media and I layered it, look at what happened. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but sweet mother of neon, look at that. Especially if I just compare the two. Look at how it totally changed that color of Kitsch Flamingo. I love it. I love, uh, it's very, very neon. It, it really, it almost has an electric kind of look very neon effect but this is because of the mixed media heavy sock i don't know what it is in this paper that is making the ink change this way i didn't notice it when i did the the swipe right just the blend so i think it has to do with how it's layered and how it really builds up the intensity but same color different paper and i love that really good now the blend well the blend you can see it blended a little different right just because of the paper color but i didn't get this kind of pop of neon that I did in the blend because I think it has something to do with just the ink, the water, and the paper. Sometimes that happens. I mean, I remember when we had the, the frayed burlap oxide spray come out and I noticed that weird green blue thing happening. Sometimes there's just a weird thing that happens with ink on paper. And that's why it's always important to play with colors and surfaces. So those are the inks, just to show you those comparisons. And there'll be photos of these on my blog following the slide so you can get an up close look at all the swatches and, and see what they do. So here we're gonna talk about the oxide pad and re-inker and I did the same thing. I always like to show how it's going to look on the different papers. So there you can see on the watercolor, same idea, just spraying and layering. There's a blend. Now a much cleaner blend, right? Because it's got a little bit of that pigment in there, that dye and pigment. So take a look at the difference between blending with an oxide and blending with just an ink. And ink is going to be translucent. So you'll be able to see so much of that white paper through the color. So another thing is if you like more intense or you like to work on different kind of uh, cardstocks or you do a lot of blending over an already inked background, 
an oxide is going to give you more color coverage than just an ink pad. But using them together is also really cool. Do a little bit of blend with your dye and then just go with a little bit of oxide on the edges here to really create a much stronger transition. That's another thing to keep in mind is mixing both of those mediums. Now, when we switch cardstock, I didn't get that electric thing that I got uh, with that. So see, look at the difference. Even though this is a dye and pigment, I was expecting to get a little bit more of this come out, but it didn't happen. So this is the oxide on mixed media. Looks pretty similar to this, right? Just a little smoother because of course we're dealing with mixed media and you can see on the blend, very similar as well. But because we have that warmer undertone, we're not getting kind of that, uh, that bluish color we're getting with kitsch. So always fun to see. I love seeing how the colors change, but really nothing, nothing happened the way that, that ink did. Okay, next we're gonna get into the sprays. We're gonna talk about spray stain and we're gonna talk about oxide spray. Now the idea behind these, these are a sprayable version of the ink pad, right? People ask, Does that, is that just re-inker in water? No, it's not. It's a completely different formulation that is designed to still wick and react and layer the way the inks do, but in a sprayable version. If you are to take either one of these inks and dilute them in water and try to make your own sprays, you will not get the reaction. You will not get the color intensity and you will not get the layerability that you would get if you have a spray medium. So that's why we do it. Does that mean you can't put them in spray bottles? No, you can, but you can't expect the same results if you're not doing that. All right, so let's talk about both. First, we're gonna get into spray stain. Now, as I mentioned, it's a sprayable version of our ink pad. So we would expect the same results as we would by smashing our ink pad in water, correct? That would be correct. See, there we go. There is that really cool neon pink that we get on mixed media using the spray stain because the spray stain is a fluid version of the Distress ink pad. So I love the fact that just by changing it with the sprays or the ink pad, I'm getting those two different colors of kitsch. Oh, so good. And now in our oxide, well, it's going to work very similar to our ink pad, which is we didn't see much of a difference between watercolor cardstock and mixed media, but I love the oxidation. One of the things I love about an oxide spray is that I get a lot of coverage very, very quickly, but I also have the ability to go in and splatter and spray water and get a really nice oxidized effect. To me, it's just a little different than the ink, right? Because I get more color intensity, even with the oxide, where sometimes with just your ink pad, you kind of lose that pop. It's very similar. Right? But if you're looking to cover large areas, maybe you do art journaling or things like that, then the best way to do it is, of course, with a spray. All right, now let's get into paint. We'll talk about those. Paint, of course, is a, uh, is a water-based acrylic paint, but it is the only distress medium in this color collection that is permanent when dry. So the cool thing about paint is that you can play around with it with water, you can manipulate its color, you can do all sorts of things while it's wet, but once this dries, it is waterproof. So if you like to do a lot of layering, you can add ink over this, you can do stamping, you could add other paints, but this layer, once it's dry, will never re-wet the way inks and sprays will in the distress line. So that's what I did here. Here, I just took some paint, put it on my craft mat, sprayed it with water, did my little swipe, dried it a, a few, and look at that, a nice, cool, kind of marbly looking paint, because the nice thing about distress paint, we have the intensity and we have that light blend of color. Now, of course, if you're just going to paint it, it has beautiful coverage, beautiful opacity. It just has a nice smooth finish because it doesn't have any fillers in there. So that's a nice thing about working with paint. You can use the paint on metal, on fabric, on wood, just really any substrate that you wanna work on. And of course, it's going to do the same thing on mixed media. I think because the paper is a little darker, I was able to see a little different shade of pink in comparison to the watercolor didn't give me that neon effect. Of course, it wouldn't because it's just a pigment, but I still like the fact that it definitely uh, had great coverage even on that mixed media. And mixed media paper, well, that's why it's called mixed media paper. You'll notice that in all the swatches, whatever wet technique we do on this paper is amplified a little more. And that has to do with the paper really bringing out those properties in any product that you work on. So even if you're not working with distress, uh, you should give mixed media heavy stock a try with your art mediums, because you're gonna see a lot more fluid movement uh, with whatever you put on it. All right, now we'll get into the glaze. Now the glaze, of course, this is a translucent, let me go get it to focus, a translucent embossing powder. And so because it is translucent, this doesn't surprise me at all. We're going to really 
see whatever paper we put on that's going to impact the color. So this is just done with clear embossing ink, whether you go in with your ink pad or your pen or your dabber or anything like that. But because it is translucent, whatever paper you put it on or whatever color background, maybe even put it over uh, another ink color is going to alter the look of that. So you can see that's the color of glaze on watercolor and that's the color of glaze over on mixed media. It almost looks a little peachy, right? So just imagine using the glaze again over speckled egg, right? You're gonna get a beautiful blue color or if you put it over a purple, you're gonna get a much more of a vibrant, intense purple because of what you're going to layer this on. So always keep that in mind with any of the glaze. It's really a fun way that you can kind of change up that, that surface. And you'll see in the makes how that is done. So there we go. So before I get into the makes, let's just talk about two more things a uh, part of the line. If you have been collecting the Distress pins, we have pin set five and six, just a couple more to go. And then we have the full palette of the pins. They're just collector pins. Some people get it. Some people don't. I get it. I love it. I've been a, a pin collector uh, for Disney for many, many years. And I just think it's fun. I love these in my studio. I'll be posting a photo of my pin board uh, with the latest kitsch on there. I'll probably post that on Instagram later today. But I love seeing that. I use it as a swatch board now. So I could just look at that. And although it's not exact to the ink because these are pins, it still gives me a nice color reference. But they're just fun. Fun to do. So let's get into the makes. Let's see these colors uh, in action. I think that's really important to, to see how these play. I'm going to put these off to the side because I think it's going to be an important thing to reference as we go through a lot of the makes and mediums. So I'm just going to put like the ink pad, the sprays. There we go, look at that. That's that's a nice little setup off to the side, I think. <laughs> All right, so let's get in. So a shout out to, actually I have four makers for this mystery color, you know, they have to, you know, sign all this confidentiality and all, no, they don't, but uh, really a shout out to uh, Sharon and Stacy and Paula and Zoe for taking on this task. It is a challenging task because one, they have to create something uh, with the new color and two, they can't talk about it. You can't even slip up when you're making this. So that's kind of a challenge. And the reason that I wanted to work with uh, those particular makers, each one were assigned a very specific style because that's the thing that I also want to share with you is that a color, sometimes you look at a color and you assume it doesn't go with your style because that's just who you are. And what I wanted to share is that depending on your style, you can bring out the best of Kitsch Flamingo into what you make. So these cards, uh, Sharon created these. Sharon loves to work with color, does a lot of vibrant, clean cards. And so here you can see like using Kitsch Flamingo on that new brushstroke die. But look, when you pair it with other colors, whether it's Twisted Citron or Mustard Seed or any of the backgrounds, you can really get all those different layers and levels of intensity with Kitsch. Because again, you've got the intensity of the pink, but as you wet it, you're gonna bring out more vibrancy. But also, as I mentioned, what do you pair it with, right? So if you put it with something really like a deep navy, like a chip sapphire, right? Look at how beautiful that pink is. It, it takes on a whole different intense color simply because of what it's paired with. It definitely has uh, much more of an intensity simply because of the blue that it's paired with. And I love that little pop of gold. The embossing powder, it's not great just using the hexagons. It's such a cool card. So just in those two alone, you're going to see that whether you do botanicals, you're doing spring things, you're doing valentines, or you really like to, uh, you're needing a pink for something bold and a pop of color, Kitsch is going to work, right? It's going to work with that. But let's say you wanted to do something a little bit more shabby chic, right? So Stacy created these, and this is showing you the softer side of Kitsch, right? You might look at those other cards and go, wow, it's really kind of a, a neon pink. No, not necessarily. What's nice about Kitsch is that when you wet it, and even if you mix it with other colors, the color maintains its integrity, right? Because it's already a beautiful pink that when you wet it, you're still going to get that beautiful wash of pink, whether you're doing background layers, whether you're doing watercolor stamping, whether you're doing the embossing glaze, so you can see that glaze embossed over vellum, all those colors really coordinate well together because of that tone of kitsch. That's why it was important to add. See, you guys are like, well, I don't know if we need a pink, but you do. We, because we didn't have this because if we wanted to do something, uh, this color, there's no way you could achieve that with picked raspberry or worn lipstick and sponge sugar is just never going to be intense enough. But I love seeing it with all these other colors mixed in there, but still in a very soft and shabby way. So 
I love these. Great for Valentine's, not perfect. It's time to use it uh, for Valentine's. And I love seeing the, the inks and sprays. You can see by using the different mediums, you just get a lot more, I don't know, a lot more play for that color. Then of course, uh, Paula, Paula created, her task was to, to show these in much more of a mixed media way, take it with ideology and how would we use it with other things uh, like paper dolls or stamped backgrounds. And I love seeing this. Look at how beautiful using just all of those colors in there. Now, this is the thing about Paula. Look, gave me a little notes here too, right? No line watercolor, like just using all of those backgrounds. Now, these makers are going to be sharing a lot of this on uh, their own blog. So be sure I'll be posting uh, who the makers were for this assignment on the blog post and there'll be links to them. So definitely check it out. But I love seeing that watercolor effect here but then you can see that spray in those ideology bouquet flowers, right? So the ideology flowers, these come white and you can spray them or ink them and they'll soak the color. But look at how vivid that is because when you use a spray stain, right? That's gonna give you a much more intense version because it's, it's just going full strength versus the ink pad. So I love the versatility of just that color and just beautiful how you see it on the et cetera tag paired with ideology, it's just all the details, right? So many great details in the makes. I love it. Now this other task, this, this took some convincing. So <laughs> I really want to uh, thank Zoe for doing this assignment because it's like, you know, Zoe's my go-to grunge, right? She's going to always do uh, the grungiest thing. And I'm like, pink goes good with brown, Zoe. Pink does. And so her task was to really use this with brown. And you can see, well, that I'm right. And she did such a great job on this. Just little steampunk elements here. There's glitch, there's stamping with pink. So even if you are a vintage grungy person and you think, why in the world would he add pink? Because of this, it's really a great way that you can add a little pop of color. And you can see here that when you pair this with a brown, it certainly doesn't take on that same vibrant tone as you get with that, or if you put it with another color, right? Isn't that interesting? And, and I think, I. I tried to express that, that the colors you're gonna see coming out in the Distress line uh, through this year and into even next year are these colors that they, they're these chameleon colors. They're a color that needed to be in the line because let's face it, we already have an extensive palette with Distress, but when you see these colors, they're always going to play some very important role in how these other products uh, work with it and different colors that go with it. So going kind of a little mix of uh, clean and grunge, Sharon did these. So here you can see how beautiful it blends, that kitsch flamingo. You can see here that when you pair it with any warm tones, you also get a beautiful blend of peach in there, which is nice. I love the contrast of black on here. And I also love this. Look at how electric that is. That's the glaze, right? So that embossing glaze, you're gonna see because it's translucent, we saw what it did when you put it over something white, it really pops, but what a great Valentine's. That's using the new uh, 3D typewriter. And I love just seeing that little note go through that die. I love the gold behind it too. I think that's just a really nice accent. But see, each time I'm showing you makes, it's a whole different feel, a whole different look of the color. And that's what I'm trying to, to express to you guys is just how different the color can be depending on what you make. So Stacy made some little treat bags. So similar to the look of the card by using the background, but if you take a look at these hearts, that's just layering up with inks and sprays because that's a beautiful way to create background paper that you can go in and use your favorite die cuts with. Again, doing any of your stamping, you can add a little sparkle to that. But that's a great thing, when you, especially if you're working on ideas and maybe you're making cards or you're doing backgrounds, just by taking that background and doing different things, it opens up a, a whole new possibility for colors, whether it's going to be uh, cards or bags or any of that. So again, shabby chic with that. And then we'll go back to uh, a Paula make. So here you can see that this one, I love this shrine that's done. So this is stamped over black. So you can see that by putting it over black, it doesn't really pop neon pink because uh, what it's paired with plus it's paint so it has a lot of pigment but on the inside i love seeing that over the texture paste look at that background it's just such a beautiful pink that shows through you can see there's some coloring over here on collage paper i love seeing it over these metal embellishments right so good always good I just love seeing these different mediums with different details. And that's the important thing about the inspiration of this live. Sure, it's the color, we can launch that, 
but seeing how that color is applied to different creative styles, right? Whether it's clean card, shabby chic, uh, vintage or grunge, I love that. I love all the details that Paula always in includes. I mean, look at the little steps and she's got the little clippings on there, the metal gate, just charming. And then the paper dolls, I love it. Love the kitchen there. Dude, see, that's the importance of <laughs> that pink. Then we'll get into another grunge, right? You wouldn't think that you would want to use pink with entomology, but why not, right? This is the whole specimen stamp set, that large moth. Look at that grit grunge on there. So good. And the background has embossing glaze. So that embossing glaze, what's nice about using that with brown is it's always going to maintain its color, even if you add layers of grunge on top of it. But because this has been stamped on, already has a little grungy background, you don't get the intensity of that pink either, right? Because we've seen how intense it is if you just use the glaze on something uh, plain. But by doing a little bit of inking first, then doing that, and then adding, I mean, look at that grit. But I love the, the look of just kind of watercoloring this out. See, that's the whole idea of the inspiration. Perfect way to incorporate the color. There's a little bit of that on crinkle ribbon. See, pink goes good with brown for sure. Very gritty, uh, very grungy. All right, now going back to the clean side, look at these cards that Sharon did. See, we're gonna go from the dark side to the clean side. We're just gonna keep going back and forth, but I really want to just express to you the importance of a color in any palette. And there's many of you that just trust that and I appreciate it. And there's some that always question the need for a certain color. And to me, uh, there's always going to be a reason for expanding the palette, not just to have another one of what we already have. So here you can see Sharon use these uh, just to die cut, just use that for different layers in the background behind Gertrude. I think that's great. And of course, this guy, new Oliver. I love seeing him in pink. How great is he for Valentine's Day? I've seen a lot of uh, clever Easter makes so far with him, but Seeing him in his kitched out flamingo style, man, I love him. He's just so cute. I love this card, Sharon. Look at this as my Valentine. I love it. It's really cute. And you can see that just by doing the different mediums, depending on whether you're blending that, whether you're going full strength from the ink pad, whether you're going in with glaze, you're able to achieve all these different shades of pink with kitsch. Now, the heart is red, but everything else, of course, is done with kitsch, even that little layered paper in the background, just done using uh, the sprays. Really nice, just very, very cool. And then we'll take a walk back on the shabby side. This one from Stacy. I love just seeing this little home decor piece. There's that paper village where you can take that little house, kind of cut it down to make a charming make. I love seeing all the funky back there, right? The funky foliage, the funky floral, funky nature, all those little die cuts. And each of these, they have little splashes of kitsch. One of the things to keep in mind that even if you're using this color as an ink for your background, if you ever have other colored elements and you want that little splash, like look at that little bit of pink right here on this leaf, right? Using your oxide or your spray, remember oxide is going to give you the ability to layer on top of those other colors if that previous layer is dry. And then look down there, I'll try to tip it to the light. There is little embossing glaze on there. So cute, I love it. Very shabby chic. Then we will get into, Paula created this accordion book. And it's always interesting. I I don't know. I, I think this might have been her fourth make. Because she always like, she will she does her makes with the color. And then she's, and she's done this with every color. Then she decides, okay, I'm going to challenge myself to mix that color with other things. And I just, I think how she did that with this accordion. Take a look at that. Look at all those details, right? Look at how just kitsch works with all those different colors. It's so springtime, so perfect, so vintage, so kitsch, right? And I love just all of that inky goodness and the little spraying. And here was another thing that I thought was very clever. Let me get a little post-it there. Is this, and I wondered what this was. This is actually uh, the house shape. And, she, and I only know that. I didn't figure that out. It's only because like here, right? All stamping, kitsch oxide. That little shape, that's from those paper village. That's that little house front flipped upside down to make that little tab for all those quotes. Isn't that clever? Using a little sewing, the little ideology. Uh, I love seeing those little tiny clips. Just beautiful vintage detail. Stenciling color, like, wow. Very, very charming. So seeing Kitsch with all those other colors just really plays into that whole springtime palette. 
Then we will jump to uh, another grungy one. And I love this. Uh, if you follow Zoe Hillman, you'll know that she does a lot of different uh, banners for different seasons. But this, it doesn't always have to be a full banner. Just taking that shape, whether you're going to uh, hang it up, just use a display hanger. But here's what I love. I love that mix of pink and steampunk. So here's showing the paint. This is on that faceted heart die over some metal foil tape, and you can see how that really provides some great grunge. Again, if you want that color to pop, you're gonna jump back to the glaze because that glaze is always gonna give you that intense pop of color, but over your text because it's translucent. But then of course, when you splatter, you can go in and splatter paint, you can do a little ink blending. There's so many great ways that pink goes good with brown. It really does. And, it, and you can see that every time, uh, Kitsch has gone in with brown, it, that pink is not this intense pink anymore, but it's visible. And that's what I think I like about seeing it with brown. And then one final make that Paula created, this charming vignette tray. I like this because here you can see that not everything has to be the new color, right? Pinky pinky where everything is together. It, can, it makes a great accent. And what's interesting, as I mentioned, is what you pair it with, right? If you pair it like on your mixed media, there's there's some of that neon color coming out. I love the addition of that little bit of glitter because that cuts the pink in there, but you can see the subtlety of it stamped in the background, some of it over here as well. And you can just see how Kitsch Flamingo just goes in with this beautiful, beautiful vintage look. Doesn't have to be the entire thing. It's just a great aesthetic to that, which is nice. I think that's, it's just beautiful, beautiful. So. Those are the makes for Kitsch Flamingo. And as I mentioned, this color is available now. Now, many of you might be asking about the minis, right? Because if you've been following these new colors, you know that I said after four colors, we'll release the mini. And by we, I mean Ranger. And when I say after four, I don't mean on the fourth. I mean after four. So we just launched our fourth color and the minis will be available later this month, right? So later this month, the mini kit of the first four colors, that's going to be Speckled Egg, Crackling Campfire, Rustic Wilderness, and Kitsch Flamingo will be a mini kit. Uh, again, it's probably going to be in the next couple of weeks. I'll announce it. I'll share it, all of that. Now, crayons, crayons won't be coming out until another uh, two more colors because those are in three packs. So we just launched crayons for the first three. Now we need another three before the other crayons. Everything has to be staggered because, well, Ranger has to make it, and it just it takes time. So as much as we want everything in every medium, good things are worth waiting for. So the minis will be out uh, later on in February and the crayons will not be out after another two colors get added to the distress sign. So that's really exciting. I'm so thrilled to introduce Kitsch Flamingo to the world of distress. I hope you guys are too. There's going to be some wonderful inspiration coming your way because this color is going out to a whole slew of makers worldwide who are going to be kind of doing their take of this new color, and I just can't wait to, to share. So that is the new Kitchamingo. All right. So I just, I think it's so interesting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, guys, I just, I got to turn this out. I just turned around because I'm wrapping up. Mario, you are too much. All right, I'm going to, where do you see this? It's, let me just get out of the way. This is what I turned around to. You are a little kitschy today. Where did you get that? Amazon. Oh. Amazon onesie. You, that, and those glasses are from my flat lay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hold on. I got to get out of the way. Okay. Can you believe him? I okay. You, what is that? Oh, I, I thought it was a skirt for a minute. No. Yeah, it's a onesie. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And they're shorts. So see, or did you cut them? No, no, they're shorts. Oh yeah. my word, Mario. I think I get a little alteration on them. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if you should be wearing those in public. That's, I'm yeah. ready. you, you're too much. That, hey, I want to be part of distress. That is full on kitsch, man. Full on kitsch. 